Good day and salutations. Today's briefing, the AS-21 Redback Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Why Australia chose it. Australia is finally to replace the venerable M113 APC with an infantry fighting vehicle, IFE, under Project Land 400 Phase 3, part of the broader Land 400 program that includes the replacement of the existing ASLAV reconnaissance vehicles. The winner is the AS-21 Redback, designed by Hanwha South Korea, with 129 vehicles to be produced in Australia. As widely suggested before the announcement, the project will now deliver a significantly reduced number of vehicles, with the original number of 450 now reduced to 129, which will cover only one mechanised infantry battalion, in addition to vehicles required for training, maintenance rotation and attrition reserve. It should be noted that the introduction of a modern IFE will lead to a doctrinal change for the Army, as the IFE can be used in ways that the M113 APC could not. So why did Australia choose the Redback over the Lynx? The AS-21 Redback was specifically designed for Australia and has significant changes from the Korean K-21 from which it is derived. With a maximum weight of 42 tonnes, up from the 26 tonnes of the K-21, the Redback is heavy for an IFE, though there are others heavier, and is powered by a 735 kilowatt or 1,000 horsepower engine, giving a power to weight ratio of around 24 horsepower per tonne, and is fitted with single piece rubber tracks. Rubber tracks are quieter, provide a more comfortable ride, and are cheaper than standard metal tracks, but are more difficult to replace in the field. The Redback's turret mounts a Bushmaster 30mm cannon and a 7.62 coaxially mounted machine gun. A remote weapon station, RWS, is also mounted on the turret roof and can be integrated with a range of weapons including a 7.62 or 12.7mm machine gun or an automatic grenade launcher. It is also fitted with spike anti-tank guided missiles. Protection for the Redback meets Stanag Level 6 requirements, that is protection against 30mm APFSDS rounds at 500 metres across the frontal arc and 155mm high explosive bursts at around 10 metres. It is fitted with a range of active and passive protection systems in addition to add-on armour, survivable seats in the troop compartment and a floating floor designed to mitigate the effects of mines or improvised explosive devices, IEDs. The passive protection system includes laser warning devices providing all-round coverage while active project protection comes in the form of the Iron Fist APS. As I mentioned in a previous briefing, in strict capability terms, you know, firepower, protection and mobility, there was little difference between the Redback and the other shortlisted candidate, Rheinmetall's uh, KF-41 Lynx. Both contenders have essentially the same power to weight ratio and both offer the same levels and options in terms of firepower, including anti-tank guided missiles, and all carry a crew of three plus eight dismounts. Both offered uh, active protection systems and Stanag level six protection. While some reasons for the decision are likely classified and others commercial in confidence, cost, etc., some reasons have been given or at least alluded to. Now, these include that in the vehicle trials, the red pack was the crew's favorite being more comfortable and providing a better ride together with more room and providing better visibility and better sights. The Redback was also deemed superior to the Lynx during the risk mitigation phase. While this was not further specified, aspects may have included concerns about performance and supply lines, with supply lines for any South Korean equipment being much shorter than from Germany. One wonders if recent acquisitions of European equipment, which have had troubled service lives, may have affected the decision. While not mentioned, production timelines may also have been a consideration, as the government is accelerating this acquisition so that the first vehicles will be delivered in early 2027, two years earlier than planned, with the final vehicles to be delivered by late 2028. Together with this, is the significance of diplomatic ties between Australia and South Korea. Of course, the new IFE project doesn't exist in isolation and represents the final stage in the hardening of the Army's mobility. 
under Land 8116, the Army will also acquire 30 AS9 Huntsman self-propelled guns and 15 AS10 armoured ammunition resupply vehicles. This self-propelled artillery system, also from Hanwha, South Korea, is currently under construction at a plant in Geelong, Victoria. Australia had previously considered a follow-on order of the AS9 Huntsman to equip a second regiment of self-propelled guns, but this has now been cancelled. The AS21 Redbacks will also be built at the same facility. Of note, it appears as though the AS21 will share the same engine as the AS9 and AS10 self-propelled artillery system vehicles. This will provide significant training and maintenance saving over the life of the vehicles. So engine commonality may well have played a part in the decision as it is a significant positive for the Redback. Australia will now have a modern IFE to support its main battle tank force, which is being upgraded. The 59 M1A1 Abrams that were acquired by the Australian Army in 2007 to replace the Leopard 1s are being replaced by 70 M1A2 SEP V3 tanks. As many will appreciate, if you are going to operate tanks, you need very capable armoured vehicles to support them. The M1A2 Abrams, AS21 Redback and AS9 Huntsman should provide a very capable and networked armoured force. Now this decision is extremely important for Australia's armoured force as the current M113A4 is not survivable on the battlefield, even in low intensity conflict. In summary, a modern IFE was probably the most significant deficiency in the Australian Army. As I stated in the comparison briefing, either of the candidates, on paper, appeared very good options. Key determinants for the government in making the decision were likely to have been risk mitigation over the full life of the project, the economic benefit from domestic production, and political considerations. Fortunately, for those who will be equipped uh, with a vehicle, the outcome of these considerations appears to have aligned with the trial and crew's view that the AS21 Redback was the best option. It will be interesting to see the export future of both vehicles going forward as a result of Australia's decision. As an addendum, the delivery of the Redbacks will be expedited to around the same time as the new HIMARS multiple launch rocket system and Army landing craft are brought into service, that is in late 2028. I wonder if there's anything in that. That concludes today's briefing. Uh, thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.